I didn't exactly ask the fine people at Moto Marini if I could maybe drop the bike and lift it. Look, it's a dust storm. See, I told you it was windy. Look at that. Oh no, the wind. The wind blew it over. Uh, it's just such a windy day out here. I'm so sorry. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to do the lift test. So Hello everyone, my name is Ian and you are watching Big Rock Moto. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And if you're new here and you like this kind of content, I hope you will consider subscribing. So today we are doing a first ride vlog and overview of the Moto Marini X Cape 649. Here she is. Now I apologize, it's a little bit windy today. Uh, it's kind of weird to be windy at this time of year, but it is. But we're gonna do our best. And it's also the lighting's not perfect, but that's what we have to work with. So here she is. This is the X Cape 649 by Moto Marini. This is kind of a newer bike, especially if you're here in the USA. In other countries, this bike has been out for a bit longer, but this brand is just getting started and established here in the USA. So here's how we're going to break down the video for you today. I'm going to start by going over some facts and figures of the bike. Uh, I'm going to take you on a tour of the bike, kind of show you some of the features. We're going to talk about some of the potential pros and cons to going with this, and then we're going to get it out for a good test ride both on and off-road. Now, stay tuned and make sure you're subscribed to catch my full, in-depth, comprehensive review of this bike coming in a few weeks. Today's video is much more informal. It's a vlog-style first-ride video. So who is or what is Moto Marini? So if you're like me here in the USA, you may not be very familiar with this brand. They're an Italian uh, firm that goes way back, you know, 50, 60, 70 years, way back in history. Actually, I think more like 80 or 90 years, honestly. Um, however, they were recently, about 2018, about what, five years ago, acquired by a Chinese uh, giant Zhongning uh, Motor Company or Zhongning Vehicle Group, uh, which is a manufacturer of all sorts of different uh, small vehicles uh, over in China. So the bikes are designed and developed in Italy but they are manufactured by Zhongning Vehicle Group in China. So kind of an interesting combination. That's why you get this really cool kind of sexy Italian styling, but they come in at an amazing price point because they're doing the manufacturing in China. Really interesting combination that we have going on here. The dealer network for Moto Marini is growing very quickly, although right now as I'm filming this, it's only about 25 or 30 dealerships in the entire USA. Compare that to something like Honda, which has about a thousand dealerships in the USA. You can obviously see some of the downside of going with uh, a newer company like this. Let's go over some of the facts and figures. Uh, so this motorcycle comes in at 8,299 US and you get a three year unlimited mile warranty, which is pretty darn nice in the motorcycle world to get that kind of a warranty. The engine is a 650cc parallel twin engine. It's actually made by Chinese engine manufacturer CF Moto. So Zhongneng does not make the motor. Uh, they get that from CF Moto. And it's based on an old Versus Kawasaki Versus 650 engine engine, uh, how CF Moto came to get that design. I know there's some debate about that, but I'm not here to go into that. I can just tell you that it's really heavily based on a Versus 650 engine, which is very, very proven. It's about 60 horsepower or 45 kilowatts, and you've got about 41 foot pounds of torque or 55 Newton meters. So not a powerhouse, but pretty smooth, pretty reliable, really steady engine, really easy to ride. This motorcycle is a little bit on the heavy side for being in this category. It's 518 pounds or 235 kilograms, full fueled up. Speaking of fuel, you've got 4.7 gallons or about 18 liters with a full tank of gas, which should put your fuel range around 200 miles or around 320 kilometers because these engines are pretty uh, economical in terms of fuel. Seat height is really reasonable on this bike. It's about 32, 33 inches, depending on what seats you have, about 830 millimeters. So that's pretty nice to see and it kind of sculpts down here. So it's not too intimidating in terms of the seat height. For suspension, we have some interesting suspension setup. This is definitely nice, a bit nice or suspension than you would get on like a Versa 650 or a V-Strom 650, something like that. So you've got Marzocchi uh, front forks, 50 millimeter diameter. You have full adjustments here, meaning compression, rebound, and preload. But the travel is a bit limited. It's only about 160 millimeters uh, or about, what is that, uh, 6.3 inches. So that's going to be a limiting factor there. With the travel, it's just, it's not, let's be honest, guys, it's really not an off-road bike, right? It can do some light off-road, but it's really not 
like a T7 or a KTM 890 or a Touareg or something like that. It's more of that road going adventure bike. Let's just be honest about it. Uh, the rear shock you only have 140 millimeters or 5.6 inches of travel and you have an adjustment for rebound and there's a preload collar but I don't think you're going to be able to adjust that preload without taking the shock out of the motorcycle. Let's take a tour around the bike a little bit. Let me turn on the lights for you here so you can see the lighting. So you've got these cool running light elements up in the front and you've got LED, full LED lights, turn signals as well, low front fender, Pirelli Rally Scorpion STR tires, Brembo brakes, that's pretty impressive. We talked about the forks already. Tubeless wheels, 19 inch front, 17 inch rear. Tubeless, which is pretty cool at this price point. A lot of more expensive bikes don't even have the tubeless wheels. I'm looking at you, V-Storm 800 and Tenere 700. Uh, the, the, the design of the, I mean, it's not, there's no skid plate. It's like a plastic kind of engine cover down here. And then you've got this low hanging exhaust header, which is very vulnerable. Uh, you can see down in here, gonna be very, very vulnerable in terms of going off road. So we're gonna have to really be careful of that. Um, come around the side, side fairing, kind of interesting. They kind of extended this out to give you some wind protection there. Side of the engine, foot pegs, which you can take the rubbers out. Exhaust, which is kind of low down here. 17 inch tubeless rear wheel. Uh, some cool badging here, big grab handle, small, small cargo rack. I should mention the accessories for this bike are very affordable. Um, if you look at their accessory catalog, very affordable accessories, luggage racks, low seats, crash bars, stuff like that. Rear license plate holder. We have no license plates. So hopefully you don't get pulled over. Um, chain drive. It doesn't come with a center stand. You can see the passenger peg uh, brackets are interesting. They have these really long brackets to come back here to get to the passenger pegs. Foot shifter. There's no quick shifter on these bikes. Coolant reservoir there. You can see the Moto Marini badges even though it's a CF Moto engine. Uh, the overall styling of the bike I think is really really impressive. Jumping up here to the cockpit, we can see the fuel tank. The controls, which are backlit, that's really nice to get. You have some menu controls here, lighting controls, adjustable clutch lever, no slipper clutch. Brake lever is also adjustable here for reach, which is pretty cool. Backlit switches, on and off, start. You've got a running light switch to turn off and on your running light. Four-way hazard switches, typical handlebar setup and everything like that. And you have this kind of narrow windshield, which is adjustable. You have to loosen this. And then you can, then you can move the, well, I think so anyway, it's not moving, but you can move the windshield up and down. There we go. Now it's up. Okay, let's put it in the up position. A little bit stiff, but you can do that. Very narrow windshield. I think that's kind of an interesting design. In terms of electronics or things like that, you do have this big TFT screen, but you don't have uh, traction control on this mic. You do have ABS, so... This thing right here, if you go, if you scroll down, oops, let's go back. If you scroll to this ride right here, if you hit set, then you can select off-road. And what off-road does, it changes the dash, but it turns off the rear ABS. That's all that it does. It's not a riding mode. It's just an ABS setting is all that is. So we'll turn that back because we're going to do the street portion of the test first. You also have a couple USB ports here, which I think is a nice design. We talked about the adjustable windshield. I think we've about covered, we've about covered it. I mean, really, what I see is like kind of V-Strom 650 versus 650, but a little bit more off-road than that. A little bit better suspension. Um, interesting, but I think that low-slung motor, the exhaust pipes, the limited suspension travel, the heavy weight. Yeah, it's not going to be a rally bike off-road racing. It's just going to be for light, moderate off-roading. All right. All right, so you know what? I changed my mind. Let's do the off-road portion first. We're here kind of at the bottom of my favorite trail for testing adventure bikes. It's not a difficult trail. It's a two-track road, but it's very washed out and rutted. It has really good, uh, really good terrain for testing the capabilities of the suspension. Suspension is really the limitation on most of these adventure bikes because normally it's too soft and really limits your riding speed. We can also kind of get a sense for the ergonomics and how the bike feels. We are on the Rally STR tires, which are, you know, an okay, off-road tire not very great so we're going to be careful we don't want to have any mishaps so let's get started riding on the marini helps if you turn the ignition on there's no label which i find weird like it's just this big gray switch there's no like on off but you kind of get used to it pretty fast Starting it up, the motor is very quiet and very smooth. It definitely sounds and feels like a Versus 650. I've ridden a Versus 650 quite a bit. One of my friends has one. So it definitely gives me that feeling that that engine does, that Kawasaki engine. You can see on top of the forks, really big, really nice big diameter forks. And you've got the adjustments for rebound and compression there. 
All right, let's go. Now I'm gonna ride for a little while sitting down, which I know I can hear all the off-road guys already typing away. You need to stand up when you ride off-road. I understand that, but a lot of people are gonna ride this bike sitting down like this, so we need to test it that way. So what do you notice when you jump on and start riding? the Moto Marini. One of the first things I notice about any motorcycle is the fueling, like how smooth is the throttle on and off. And I'm happy to say this is very nice and smooth on and off, no jerkiness in the throttle. And the power, like even if I go full power, it's a very bumpy trail. <laughs> I know you can't see it in the video, but it's very rocky and bumpy. Um, even if I go full power, like it's not overwhelming. So it's good for newer riders. 60 horsepower is a nice amount. It's enough to get going and pass traffic on the highway, but it's not a crazy amount of power and you don't really need traction control and things like that. So sitting down and riding, it feels pretty comfortable. The seat's pretty soft. You feel like you're kind of down inside the bike, you know, with the, with the dash and the windshield up in front of you. Um, so that gives a pretty secure feeling. Handlebars are nice and wide. The suspension is doing a you know a decent job it's about what i would expect it kind of reminds me of riding like a honda cb 500x or something like that it's about that level of suspension i would say in terms of the travel and and what you can hit without bottoming out so now we get into some of these <coughs> bigger washouts like that so i bottomed the rear shock out there but it was kind of a soft bottom out this is a deeper hit right here yeah i mean it's just going to be about keeping your speed within check. It's not a bike designed to ride really fast. You're going to start breaking things. You're going to reach your ground clearance limit. You're going to bottom out your suspension. But if you ride kind of at this sort of a pace, it's really not bad. Yeah, it really reminds me a lot of like a CB500X, but with a little more power and, well, a lot different styling, obviously. A bigger dashboard things like that and at the price point this thing comes at is pretty crazy i mean this is the price of the klr adventure model um what is the v-strom 650 xt like 10 11 thousand dollars i mean this is way less than that versus this is more off-road oriented than a versus for sure and at this kind of a pace it feels fine it, the suspension is pretty decent for a bike at this price point actually rides fairly smooth it absorbs the bumps and ruts and things fairly well it's it's an easy motorcycle to ride standing up here the ergonomics are they're okay for standing i definitely want to take the rubbers out of the foot pegs and use the metal serrated foot pegs not the rubber because i don't feel secure on that but actually other than the rear shock feeling kind of soft um it's really not bad at all Yeah, this is about as fast as you can go on this kind of terrain on this bike because you're limited by your suspension. But that's the case with a lot of adventure motorcycles, if we're honest. Try to ride a little bit faster here. It's stable. It feels, you know, pretty good control. Let's sit back down a little bit. Oh, my camera's all wacko. Um... Oh yeah, I've got the ABS on, so you can still stop, as you can see, there's full ABS. Now let's do some low speed, low speed stuff. It doesn't feel, it doesn't feel too big and heavy. It definitely feels like, you know, kind of that mid-sized category. It's not, doesn't feel big and heavy like a GS or Tiger 1200 or something. It feels more like that Tiger 900 or V-Strom 800 kind of a size fans running there the clutch is easy to whoa that was weird the bike is the bike is a little top heavy and tippy so like when you start yeah when you get it over leaned over about like that it feels like it wants to fall over for sure so that's a little heavy a little top heavy not terrible but it doesn't have the good weight distribution of like a ktm 890 or something like that or a tuareg it feels heavier than a v-storm 800 for sure but if you start 100, it's about $3,000 more than this. That's a big price difference.
Whoa. Uh, yeah, the bike. <laughs> the bike really doesn't like to be pushed. It starts to get, you know, lose control a bit when you start to ride faster. It just, the chassis and suspension is designed, it's designed as a road bike. I mean, let's be honest, it's designed as a street bike, right? So putting on a 19 inch short wheel and a tiny bit more suspension travel doesn't make it a, an off-road bike all of a sudden. Um, but it's okay, just don't ride fast. But I kind of want to take another look under this engine here. See, I'm worried about hitting something. So, yeah, underneath here, like, I mean, man, that exhaust is really low. Super low. Yeah, I'd be really worried about that. And it goes all the way back under here. So, I don't know. They're going to have to have some kind of a skid plate that actually has good protection. If you want to know about skid plates, just watch my little short videos I did where I punched a hole in the engine on my KTM 890. And that bike has a lot more ground clearance than this and a lot better skid plate than this already. Alright, now I didn't exactly ask the fine people at Motor Marini if I could maybe drop the bike and lift it. Uh, there's no crash bars, there's nothing really to protect it, so let's see... Oh no, the wind! The wind blew it over. Uh, it's just such a windy day out here. I'm so sorry. Okay, well I guess we'll have to do the lift test. So, um, yeah. So here's that underside of the engine with the exhaust I'm talking about. So it definitely reminds me of that Versus that I'm so familiar with from Kawasaki. You can see how the headers come out here and then come under the engine. And this is just a cosmetic guard. And you've got the big collector kind of under there. So the bike does fall, you know, fairly flat obviously and the control levers look a pretty flimsy to me like they're gonna bend or break so I'd be really nervous about that it's impacting on the peg the shifter which I'm very worried about breaking the shifter um, the fairing is the fairing is not touching uh, the fairings not touching see how windy it is I mean it just blows right over uh, side stand maybe the clutch lever it's good to rest your bike on the clutch lever that's a good idea the turn signals digging in so yeah get some kind of crash bar or something like that all right let's lift her up and see how we go here <clears throat> okay look it's a dust storm see I told you it was windy look at that it's a bloody dust storm all right, well, the lifting wasn't too bad. It feels like about how, how a 500 pound bike should. It's easier than a Tenere 700. It kind of reminds me of like lifting the V-Storm 800, maybe a little easier than that. It feels heavier than a CB500X, because it is. And that's a good point. You know what? This bike is actually about, uh, what is this, 65? Like 75 or 80 pounds more than a CB500X. So that's a lot for only 10 more horsepower and better styling. Better suspension, better brakes. Yeah, that's true. Um, but that Honda is a pretty good value for what the CB500X goes for. Okay, now that we did our, uh, well, now that the wind blew it over and we had to pick it up, let's go. All right, let's test this bike on the street. Let's do some uh, acceleration testing, if you don't mind. Full power. Okay, you know what? I mean, 60 horsepower is pretty good. Uh, it gets up to 70 miles per hour. Uh, pretty, pretty good. I mean, you're gonna be able to beat traffic and beat most cars out there. It's just, it's not gonna be. If you're an adrenaline junkie or a power junkie, this is not gonna be. You know, it's not gonna be your bike. 60 horsepower is just not gonna cut it for, for you if you're like that. But if you're just looking to go for a ride and you don't care about having crazy acceleration then this is this is fine uh, in terms of like cruising out here on the highway i am getting a lot of wind and a lot of wind noise the the windshield i just feels like too narrow i think if they just made it wider it'd be really good if i turn this There we go. You know what? That's that's not bad. 
it's not too bad once they lift that up actually the buffeting is not too bad uh, I'm 5 foot 10 1.78 meter I'm wearing a peak uh, helmet cryos pro so you know I, I usually get more buffeting than like a street helmet would um, the bike feels at 70 it's only turning 5,000 rpm I have to be careful here not to get speeding tickets um, the police station is literally right over there so there's a lot of police here uh, yeah it, you know it's comfortable this would be a great road bike for touring or commuting or you know going for weekend rides out on the road uh, you know feels really feels really nice you sit down inside of it pretty well protected the engine has like no vib no vibration really at all There's not a ton of like roll on acceleration, you know, if you're going 70 and you want to punch up to 90, you know, you don't have a lot of power to do that. But again, again, it's only 40 foot pounds of torque. Don't expect too much. Uh, the mirrors buzz a little bit, but they are pretty big. They have a pretty good view. It's not bad. Um, you know, cruise control would be cool, that, that, but, but you're not going to get cruise control because it's a... Uh, it's a cable throttle. Um, yeah, it's an old school cable. It's not a ride by wire. Maybe that's one of the reasons why it has such a smooth throttle response. I don't know. The dashboard, you know, you've got this big tack, you've got the speedometer, you've got a fuel gauge, you've got temperature gauge, you've got some displays at the bottom here, gear indicator, clock. It does have phone uh, integration, which we're not gonna show in this video today, but maybe we'll do that in the full review. And it has some sort of navigation setting as well there. Not sure what, what that's about. But I think if you're buying this to use mostly on the road, which most people are gonna do, I think you'd be very happy. And people are happy with these. I mean, there's a lot of people who put quite a bit of uh, miles on these uh, in, in other countries over in Europe and places, and they, they've been really happy with these bikes. give it the beans a little bit here the motor is very smooth all the way up to redline and actually the bike handles really well going through these sweepers at about 80 or 90 <laughs> Calm down now, calm down, son. Let's see how the brakes feel. Yeah, brakes are strong. Come on, full power. So what I like about a bike like this is you can, if you're a pretty decent rider, you can use all the power of the bike, which is kind of fun to do that. If I go full throttle on uh, like a big 1200, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be going way too fast, but not on this thing. I've often said that small bikes with less power can be more fun to ride. I still agree with that. Come on. You. All right, well, I got home and then I realized I forgot to film like a little conclusion segment for this first ride vlog. So hope you guys enjoyed the first ride and learned something from it. Stay tuned for a full review where I'll go into detail on all sorts of aspects of the bike. So here's kind of my parting thoughts I have for you in this video. I do think, I mean, I'm, I'm personally pretty impressed with what Moto Marini has been able to do as such a new company, a new brand, putting together this Italian design and development with the Chinese manufacturing, bringing it here to the USA, passing all those regulations, getting it on sale, building a dealer network. I mean, it's pretty impressive what they were able to pull off. The bike kind of reminds me of like a V-Strom 650 in a way, like maybe it's kind of like that, but of course it comes at a lower price point uh, and you're getting something made in China versus something made in Japan, which you can argue about in the comment section and I can already hear you typing that. But it is what it is and the world is changing and there's more options out there. 
So it kind of reminds me of a V-Strom. It kind of reminds me of a Versus, but you've got, you know, you've got the bigger front wheel, you've got the spokes, you've got a little bit better suspension, a little bit better technology, way different styling, of course. So it's a good option to have. Is it like a serious off-road bike? No, but they didn't design it as such and nor are they marketing it as such. So keep in mind what you're doing with the bike, but if you're looking at like a CB500X, a V-Strom 650, a Versus 650, something like that, then I think you should be looking at this as well. Now, we already talked about it. You know, the dealerships, they're not really there yet. Um, they're starting to get established, but it's very new here in the USA. The reliability, we, we don't know. It's a question mark, right? If it is a Kawasaki design or design motor originally, then it should be good, but, but we don't know. We don't know, right? It's just, it's just a question mark. I can't answer that. But let me know what you guys think. Would you buy one of these? What do you think of it? What do you think of the styling? What do you think of the performance, the features, the price point? I really like to have a discussion about this in the comments and know what you think. And also the fact that it's Chinese. Like, are you ready for a Chinese motorcycle or a Chinese adventure bike? I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I am, maybe. I'm not sure. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching it. Please support Big Rock Moto. There's ways to do that in the description below. Other than that, please ride safe and I'll see you out there.